Sultan Al Haji joins us today. He's the vice president at Total EP from Abu Dhabi. Thank you for joining us here on Mad Talks. What kind of leader are you, Sultan? I don't know. I think of myself as a mixed leader. <laughs> a what leader? A mix. Mixed. Mixed. There's a little bit of everything. Yes, I think a so. <laughs> because my background. I mean, okay, I'm born here in the United Arab Emirates. My education are from here, but I lived part of my life in US. I did my undergraduate there, and I live also. I did part of my life in Paris. I did my masters and so forth, so and I worked there also. So I think combination of all together. It's basically representative of UAE, what we have today, so like I call it always rainbow coalition. So if somebody from here say I'm a leader, I say, well, I'm rainbow leader. I like that <laughs> phrase very much. So what colors do you add to the spectrum then, if you're a rainbow leader? What parts are there? Well, I think being a leader, the first and most important thing is tool is listening, really. Once you listen, you adapt yourself to the situation and you can act and react accordingly. But if you don't listen, you miss the whole platform, whether it's a business or people or opportunities. So I think that's, I take that as, a, as, a, as advice for myself to listen to people first, because in the day, the leader's job there is to motivate and lead people by virtue, by default. To lead people is to be able to, to empower them, to convince them, to take them from where they are to something which they don't know, maybe they're afraid to go, but they have confidence in you and they have trust that where you're leading to them for and to is make them happier and more progressive in their life. What kind of people do you like around you in your work? What kind of people do you hire or put your trust upon? I, I think the easiest way to say it, uh, to, if to make my life comfortable, I like people like myself. Birds alike, flock alike. So that's the easy part. But the business will not progress because I have people like myself with me which I think can be more efficient, better uh, company organizations. But being innovative more than what we do, we need a lot of people who are chaotic in their thinking. I'd be normal because always I believe that the magic happens out of the box, not in the box. We can bigger make the box bigger, faster, but it's still is a box. But to change the paradigm, what I call the paradigm shift from where we are to something better is thinking out of the box. And a lot of people who lead us and challenge us with that kind of thinking, I've been normal thinking, chaotic thinking, that's what I like about the people. So it is the people who are different from you? Exactly. Who are dis willing to disrupt basically exactly. your thinking? To challenge me and to give me new ideas, to add value to what we do, rather than just duplicate what we do. And you listen to them and that makes all the difference? Sometimes I listen, sometimes I don't, but this is a fun part of it because we have to enjoy the process. The objective will be there anyway, we can reach the objective, but not at the count of miseries, at the count of fun. So for myself, my American company, and the people working with me to have fun and pleasure to reach there. Leadership aside, going over to making a difference, how do you make a difference? I think the least we can do is smile. <laughs> 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 Laughing, <laughs> smiling? <laughs> That's the best remedy. When people are at ease, when people are happy, they can do much more, a lot, than being people are under stress and misery. So I think this is a part of my life. I say every day in the morning, I do my prayers. I say, God, help me to make somebody happy today. How do you make people happy, though? And just today, I read a, an article that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed has put together a happiness council. He's appointed yes. a new head a professor from Columbia University. And I was thinking, so what exactly would that person be doing on a day-to-day -day basis to make people happy in Dubai and the UAE in general? Happiness is two things. It's a responsibility, first of all, and it is a gift. Responsibility is I'm responsible for you as a human being, taking all my taboos and, and, and I think the red tapes of thinking what you are, gender, or race, or color, or height, or profession, or titles. Once I take all of this back, I see a human being now, what that human being needs from another human being? A hand? I give you a hand. An interview? I give you an interview. What we can do is enjoy the process because none of us can ensure or assure the end product, the results. What else we can do is just to give you a way to go through that door, to give an interview. Maybe you'll be employed or not, but why should I disappoint you by not giving you an interview, for example? Why should I disappoint you when you, get, you need a dirham and I have a dirham? I give you a dirham. That's what burden me. Why should I close my mouth while you need a smile 
a shoulder to cry. I, if I can, I will do it. So what you say that at each of us can do a lot of things if we focus on ourselves. If we are in that position, your position, somebody's position, what we should do give it to you? So that's my contribution to human being. Whatever I do on a daily basis, an employee have a complaint, have a car with his wife or a son or child, come sit please, let us talk about it. I know it's not my job, it's not my business, it's not taking my companies out, but this is investment we do in another human being. That's the way we are successful in the corporate. Because we have to invest in other people's. Give, being generous. You know, this year is a, declared by His Highness a year of giving. So the question is, should we just pour our pocket? Maybe some of us cannot do that. Then what else we can do? The other day I had dinner, I'll tell you the truth. I had dinner with my family because my mother was hospitalized. And in the middle of dinner, just the dinner came in, and I came my brothers and sisters, and my brother drove me to that place, to the restaurant. Suddenly the blood bank called me. They have a case, an accident in the hospital, they need the blood, and they have rare blood to, to be given. Nobody else has it, I have it, fortunately. I think it's a blessing of God. So they tell me, come now, it's okay, I have to come now. I left my family there, I took a taxi, went to the blood bank, given them blood, came back to the family again with a taxi. And for me, it was a really joy, sheer joy. Because that time I said, I was gifted as a human being to save somebody's life. If we do that, if God gave us all these gifts, why we should deny it to somebody else's? That's and you made someone blessed. happy. Yes, so I saved life. And it's fantastic. When you can't do something to make somebody happy, some family happy, or save a life, or give an opportunity to somebody, or make somebody successful, this is a gift. The theme of today's conference is the future is now, and the future is changing at a rapid speed. What do you advise young people to do? How, what values to have? What education to pursue? To be able to cope in this future that is heading towards us at a rapid speed? I tell you the truth. There's certain assurance in life, we cannot change it. The gravity, we can't do anything about gravity. If you want to fly, you have to get a plane. Nobody in this life, previously or now, have more than 24 hours. This is a fact of life. Human being is human being. So what I can say, somebody in this morning have said there, for example, save your, in your niche. Save or invest in what you're good at. That's the way to go about. Everything you can learn is just tools. Computer is a tool, uh, language is a tool. Take these tools to enhance a gift you have, God-given gift. Because I believe, as a human being today, and I told my colleagues, there are three things I learned in this life now. First of all, you'll be better than yesterday, as a human being. And whatever you do, you're an artist, you're a painter, whatever you do, be a better painter, or artist, or photographer, or interviewer, or cameraman. Be faster, because as you said, life is changing faster. If Uber or Tesla is the mode, take it. Don't waste your time driving the car because you can save that time by reading something in the car. So take and be faster. Be cheaper. That means your value be higher than yesterday. So the product you produce or the giving advice you give is much more expensive than yesterday. So if you take these things in your life on a daily basis, you invest in yourself, in your skills, in your emotions, in your intellectuals to be a better person, to be equipped and prepared for the future. So let's say the future to, to the future. If you have two skills you have to learn, only two skills. Don't forget, do your math. Mathematics will be the language of the future. Whether you hate it, you don't like it, just do it. Second thing, emotional intelligence. Very Languages, big. adaptation. If you are in Japan, we should speak Japanese. Do it. It's a chance. Don't, I was in Paris. First day, I could not understand one word. I came from Miami, speaking a little bit of English and Spanish, but no French. I went to INSEAD, not INSEAD, it was an ISEC IMD to, to, to do my courses for MBA and working total was assigned there. Let me say, we speak French here. It's okay, fine. Give me some months. Four months later, I came speaking French. That's why I said, adapt yourself to the situation. That's where your success story happened. Look at Dubai. We have more than 460 nationalities. We're, like I said, Rainbow Coalition. We are. If we don't adapt, Dubai will not be what's Dubai today. We will not be adopt as it is. We adapt ourselves, all of us. You give some, I give some. Culturally speaking, yes, we have different cultures. But when we are here, we have one culture only, UE culture. And this is what it is. Different languages, yes, this is communication tools. Doesn't matter. What changes would you like to see in the next couple of years here in the UAE? In UAE, I think we can't complain, really. Well, we got blessed 
God blessed us with uh, great leaders, really. And uh, the, every day they're teaching us a lesson to, to, to learn and to adopt ourselves. But what His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed said, we need to be more tolerant. This we are already. We tolerate each other. Second thing, attitude. We have to respect each other. What really makes me upset, when I open the door to a lady or somebody, I appreciate it say, thank you. Gratitude. And it starts from younger age to older age. There's not enough of thanks and gratitude to anybody. And this kindness. And kindness. Kindness is something so beautiful. Exactly. It's so easy to give, but <laughs> you don't but see it more. every day. We need, people should say it. I mean, tomorrow is a Christmas or New Year or the Eid. Mm. Let us demonstrate that we're happy. Because when you put a smile on somebody's head, it goes back to their embedded in their, in their body. They go back home and reflect that to their families and children and so forth. And, so on. and the children will behave even better. Mm. Because we are tolerant, because we are better behaved, because our attitude will change, automatically our environment will change according to this. So I need to see more of gratitude in the society. And it is down to parents to teach their children to be kind. If it's the housemaid every or the cleaner, every or it's person. the uncle yes, or yes, aunt or yes. brother. In shopping malls, in grocery, in taxi, whatever it is. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. You're kind. I want to speak to you about failure because you're a successful businessman. And so the obvious question is the other side of the story. <laughs> failure. Have you ever failed at anything? Of course. Uh, somebody told me, first I told him, he said, did you pay you the price? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'll not talk to you as a, as a colleague unless you pay the price. I said, what do you mean? He said, did you fail? I said, yes, heavily, heavily. And that's the price you pay. The more you pay the price, you fail, the more you success you become. Look at the mountains. The taller mountains are, the deeper the ocean are beside them. And that's a fact. But don't make failure as a habit because it's contagious. You will live in a circle, a vicious circle. Make a success a habit. Yes. Because I said before, no matter how much we are as an engineer brilliant, we cannot assure the output, the results. Mercedes-Benz, Lexus, uh, Kodak, all, I mean, Nikon is not, it's not Kodak anymore, Kodak is out of business. All of them are built by robots. But then why have default? Why have 3% of the cars are come back to the factory? Ask my question. Because engineers can ensure the process, but you cannot ensure the results. And that's what fail comes. We have to make ourselves excellent in what we do, but leave it to God to make it Right product we 99.9% will be okay. But we should be prepared for the worst scenario. And I failed, yes, I failed in businesses and I lost a lot of money. In friendship and in relations and jobs. Yes. I mean there's so many stories I have to say. So what did you do when you failed? I gathered myself my pieces together, I learned lesson, talked to a consultant, talked to people, why should I do better? And learned. And most of failure happens of two reasons, basically, because we deal with people. And what relation we have today is respect. You respect me for what I am, I respect for what you are. We just met, right? From this, we build up confidence. And failure happens when all these two parameters shaken up between people, company, organization, banks, whatever it is. When there's no respect, we try to cheat each other. And there's no confidence. What's your legacy? 40 years down the line, 50 maybe? To live a life without a title. People ask me, what's your title? I mean, you have said it in the beginning. And Vice books, President of Total EP. Yeah, and there's a, somebody wrote a biography and, and I said proudly, my title is a coffee boy. What is your title? Coffee boy. Coffee boy? Yes. You I bring your wife coffee no. in the morning? No. <laughs> I, I like to leave a legacy that I left as I am. Something had a value, changed people's life. More than just a wealth or a title. I don't hang in my offices certificates and blah and awards. No, there is some, you know, I cannot say drag about it. There's plenty. You can go to Google's or to LinkedIn and you can see all this. But I don't drag about it. This is not my legacy. This is people, what they thought of me. But what I want them to think of me when I'm dead in a tomb and somebody. Who is this person? What he did in life? Did he leave a title for us? He was a great leader. He was that? No. I said, I would like to live a, uh, live a life when I did impact on somebody's life to be a better life as a human being. A person who makes a difference by giving happiness and kindness to other people. Sultan, thank you so much thank for joining you. us today. Thank you.